Hello. Hi. And uh, welcome today for our 66th investigative cycle of uh, uh, Grifase team. And my name is Ephesia, and our support operator today is. Mm -hmm. And I'm Oksana. Yeah. And uh, yes, we are ready to uh, start this new adventure. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Fantastic. OK, close your eyes and relax. I will go into count from five to one. And then I will go to start with the first question. Five. All your body now. You're going to be very, very relaxed. From your head, face down to your body. Or deeper and deeper relaxed. Very, very comfortable. Down deep, down through your body and relax. To deeper and deeper. And one. The count of three. I will ask you the first question of our cycle. Three, two, one. Today. Sana, we're going to talk about organ transplant. Observe what happens from a metabolic and immune point of view when a living body is deprived of an organ. It's like a shock came to me when you were asking the question. Shock to the immune system, shock to the body. Mm. Oh, body goes into overdrive mode to compensate. That's what it's came. What happens when it's uh, lacking an organ or or getting an an implant? Could, yeah. could you please repeat? Uh, because um, that that's the only thing that came. It's like okay. a shock to the system, pretty much. Okay, I'll repeat the question. Observe what happens from a metabolic and immune point of view, mm -hmm. when a living body is deprived of an organ. Yeah, it's, it's just a uh, different, um, the energies don't go the same way. And uh, the system starts to kind of like getting 
Ah, goes into shock mode and that tries to rebuild itself in a different way to function properly. But the whole thing is just uh, unnatural to the biological body system as a whole, almost like a computer system. We'll try to compensate for the lack of Okay. Is that all? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. What happens energetically when a living body is deprived of an organ and more specifically, what happens to the etheric body? I feel like the etheric body would be more accessible to the entities because it would create some sort of portal, like a wormhole, and it would weaken it energetically mm, because there's always, always a story behind mm, the missing of something in the energetic body. I feel like most of the cases is the um, something happens before soul incarnates when she has a fight of some sort or she's programmed to suffer or maybe even die right after birth by entities who control it. And therefore, it's it just an artificially created program, I feel, to lack something in the body, as far as physical and energetic too, because it just weakens it all together and can be. And plus, I feel like, so it's like right here, I see there's multiple project projects done by different um, races of humanoids. I see greys, I see mantis uh, race, predominantly also reptilians back there, tall greys, that they do projects related to the organ transplant and nurse and also genetic information taken from organs and also what happens to the body when it's missing an organ. Uh, so there's like multiple aspects of it. Hmm. Depends on personally on the case. Do you want to add anything else? Not for now. Okay. Then the expropriation of a specific organ have karmic implications. Yes or no? Sometimes, yes. Only sometimes. Depends on the case. I really feel like it's... um. You need more specific information and you need a particular case. But yes, it can depend on that too. But the karma is controlled by the entities. Mm -hmm. In the, you know, if you go further on the chain of how that happened in the first place, they installed the karma, the wheel of karma, and then they, by using that tool that they created, they would deprive somebody of an organ and they would make this person suffer or die early uh, in the physical. You know. so okay. Ready for the next question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Can the expropriation of a certain organ affect a human being 
on a soul and spiritual le level? Yes or no? Mm, yes. Mm, depends which organ, yes, it does. Okay, can you explain to me how? I, I saw right away like a kidney missing. Uh, not really a big deal because there's another one that is present. Even though it does weaken um, the mental, emotional, energetic bodies all together. But let's say if um, something more important is missing. Uh, like, uh, I don't know why I see, I see people sometimes even like with parts of the brain, it's possible. Uh, or something like a function of an organ is missing in a way like you cannot hear and it just lowers your vibration because you learn to live in the world and adapt to it and you don't feel complete physically uh, so you i feel the person like that would live in a survival mode more even though they would get used to it, but still, I, I feel like the energy sphere of a person like that is shrunk. It's not, it cannot expand to the fullest because of the mental programs of lack, physical lack. It, it's all running, it's just like a strand of computer programs I see, but I see them weird, like lines and those people with organs lacking, they have lines going through their energetic body <laughs> and they can insert different programs and do more research on those. And to begin with, they usually participate in some sort of research to begin with in a CIRIC that the uh, alien races do on them. Because there's a story behind each person like that. It, it sometimes it's very complex why they were born without an organ. So. Okay. Anything else? No. Cool. Okay. Observe what happens when a living body is deprived of an organ on a genealogical level. Hmm. Living body, biological body, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It d depends on the, uh, well, it depends whether that, so the child, right? The child is usually, it's very like bright. What I see, I'm taking a child with, once again, a kidney missing, like the most common case, I guess. And the child doesn't feel much, you know, but, Here's the problem. The problem was the society who views, they feel like there's more psychological damage goes into the mental and emotional bodies hysterically. And physically the child knows it because he's constantly taken to some uh, doctors, you know, to check on him. And he, from early age, then certainly program into him, let alone the entities who try to get to him through the doctors who observe him uh, to, to get his vital energy. Um, he feels uncomfortable. He feels unequal to others. He starts feeling something's wrong with him, but it's basically not his program. It's artificially inserted into him. And 
this child like that, I feel like he or she is psychologically damaged from early age because the parents are scared of something, you know, he's not the same as others. And uh, they would be like taking, and the doctors are happy, you know, to to say, to scare the parents about it. So they would take the child like that to see doctor very often. And they would really put him, I see like a big database of medical records of kids who are like that. And uh, they also, a lot of times, participate in some studies, which they're not aware of. Um, you know, hysterically, likewise, on the earth level, physically. So it, I feel like there is a, just like a system that sucks you in and you become one of the uh, uh, people who are in this huge medical database. And they're, they're doing a lot of research on that, too. They also creating artificial organs in the etheric, I feel, in, in the underground labs. Mm. They have the machines, you, they can grow organs quickly, but they're not interested in giving this to people because they, um, they're doing research. It's, it's, it's a very important topic for them related to organs and implants. Oh. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are the manifestation reactions transformations that always occur every time an organ is expropriated from a living body? Yes or no? Yes. You say both? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, it does, does have reactions. Mm. Okay, and how? It's like natural mechanisms. Uh, of um, it's all it's almost like a mechanism that is built into a system like a software of a computer for what the body would do in this case and what the body is it's trying to go into overdrive mode to compensate for the organ missing say and um, to fill up the space with its energies. And, but the problem is here is I always see, whenever I say about it, I see uh, alien groups who control these processes, who uh, start abducting a person like that, or, you know, the person would have different implants and they would uh, closely control a person like that. Yeah, and there's also a database and a story, like a medical history on their computers. I see underground labs and also see uh, spaceships. Be because instead of that organ, they can insert any other implant or they can um, they can better control the body because the energetically it, it, it's like take take something out of the car motor and it wouldn't run properly it's like it it doesn't run properly anymore and in a way they would help it not run properly with different experiments they would do on it inserting or changing implants Mm, trying to see how the immune system would work, psychologically help the person, all this mental, emotional bodies. Well, those experimented on too, due to 
this sort of things happening to the physical. Mm, it what comes to be constantly experiments, experiments on humans. It's what I hear and feel. Mm. Just energetically, it's like you you become damaged. Um, that's what happens. All right. Okay, we can move to the next question. Mm. What conditions are created in a transplant patient body when an organ belonging to a foreign body and therefore to another human being is implanted? You know, I, I see like a metaphorically two glasses of water. One has its own programs and information as water crystals contain information. Another one has another set of information and psychological problems, wounds, you know, everything you are, all this layers and layers of uh, emotional and mental wounds and problems and you know also whatever DNA uh, information DNA contains of this person is also in this glass and all of a sudden this glass as an implant is poured into different glass different body uh, it, it creates a confusion and a shock immune system reacts to it as a foreign information tries to reject it uh, but I th that then there are chemicals in form of pills which person would take uh, by prescription by doctor to make this process subside and so the body wouldn't reject it as much as immune system, you know, the, the uh, immune cells would it start attacking the uh, cells of the organ implanted into the body, but then chemically would stop the process, but it's totally unnatural. The person might start feeling strange. It's because of the integration of foreign information into this particular body. As if I try to merge two galaxies together, they would be totally unnatural because this one has its own set of programs, another one, other set. And then this person would start feeling, would, would start feeling like getting feelings of a different person, thoughts of that person whose organ belongs to. Uh, sometimes I feel with might have even flashbacks from the life of that person they took the organ from or if it was I see a car crash and the person dies and they took the organ from that person into the sick person you know who's lacking an organ and that person might start getting traumatic thoughts uh, dreams mm, you know, he would not understand how, where it's coming from, but it's almost like he could relieve the car crash of that person because the information of this is already encoded in every single cell of the body and of the organ of what this person went through by going through a car crash. Uh, I guess it gets, gets recorded. And everything it's like our organs are fractals of the whole galaxy which we call a body and if you take something out it would have all the information that the whole body including the brain and the mind has and um, why would you like to merge two computers together it would create chaos and that's what it does it creates chaos 
And I feel like sometimes a person can go almost insane and crazy and need psychiatric help, which would not help because it's, it's, it's not supposed to be that way. It's actually cross, cross, almost like cross breeding, cross hybridization project. Always comes to a project, some sort of project that because behind all these doctors and medical system, I see huge groups of aliens and each one has agenda on some sort of genetic project of hybridization on humans. And that's why they create all kinds of conditions for it. Different diseases, they create those diseases by themselves to make us, put us in a position to actually go to the doctor and then behind the doctor, this group of aliens who would give them some medication, they would basically be testing something, some medication in the astral and physical on the patient to, the patient is not aware he's participating in a project, but he is. And it's an alien project that's totally not human because he's, he's wanting, you know, they turn on his instinct to survive, to leave, and he is ready to agree to anything. By taking medication, he kind of signs a contract with this alien group to participate in this particular project that they have. It's very heavy, this whole system. Is, is that all or you want to add anything else? No, I just feel that's very heavy energies. Okay. Observe the karma of the recipient after the organ transplantation. Yeah, it's like a merge. It's like merging of two humans merging of information, merging of the memories of childhood, of DNA, whatever is encoded in DNA from the lives of his parents. They would all go into this human. Uh, the karma is more like the whole, the term of karma is, it's, it's not I don't feel like it's correct in this case. It's more like the informational databases would connect and merge into each other. And all of a sudden, the, per uh, the person is not living his life. He is actually, it's almost like he's starting to lose the, um, the desire to live as he doesn't feel like his body belongs to him anymore. And he doesn't understand, there's a disconnect, there's a constant internal fighting because his subconscious is trying to reject the information that's not his. So it's on both physical and energetic level too. And because of this person would constantly, it's almost like a lifetime of fight by using also the chemicals. I see some pills or medication taken by a person uh, because the body would always try to reject the, uh, the foreign object as an organ. And it's like a pat pathogen, you know, it views as a pathogen. He has to be killed by immune cells. Phagocytes, you know, to helpers, T helpers, T killers, they're all attacking you know, the organ cells. And um, basically, you might start living the life of that person whose organ belongs to in a way because it would start getting its thoughts, ideas, uh, some concepts of life. Uh, and that would be very powerful because it's it's a it's like a processor of your brain merged with another processor 
and all of a sudden you become it's like duality in your brain on one hand i know life like this this is my perspective and another and then there's another perspective all of a sudden that comes from the organ that gives information to the brain and then you got a different idea you don't know where idea comes from but it's all of a sudden it's just there and it starts circulating driving you crazy because you you feel like it's not these are not your thoughts this is not the way you view the world but all of a sudden it comes to mind <laughs> you know like a split in personality is like almost like Mm, bipolar disorder of some sort and that the, but I feel like it's more like very traumatic psychologically because the person would experience uh, uh, dreams of that person the organ belongs to psychological traumas would come to me from from him from that information that the organ brought was it in even if the person doesn't remember the dreams, it would, he would still feel it. He would still get like flashbacks. Um, like tra traumas would react to people differently, to situations sometimes differently, would not understand what's going on and would feel like he's not in control of his body anymore and his emotions. His reactions to the world would be different that i guess that's what you can call karma in a way because he kind of brings the karma of that person onto himself by taking him or his organ and implanting it in his For some reason i want to say garden this is like the body is like a garden and you implant something different doesn't belong to you so. That's what it is. Okay. All right. Is that all? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Observe the astral body of the recipient that is the emotional one after the transplant. What condition can be created? I feel guilt right away. I feel guilt. I feel sorrow because the person. I, feel I um, sorry, Oksana, I have to repeat yeah. the question because we had okay. uh, a little problem with uh, the connection. Sorry about yes. it. I will going to repeat the, the question. Observe the astral body of the recipient. That is the emotional one after the transplant. What conditions can be created? Oh, emotionally. Yeah, how's it called? It PDS? Uh, Post traumatic symptom? PD, yeah. It, it's almost like the same that, let's say, a soldier would feel after the war trauma um <laughs> post-traumatic uh syndrome symptoms type thing emotionally because it is very traumatic and it's connected to the physical and all of a sudden the physical sends signals to the emotional body that something's wrong and the person feels something's falling inside of him and he's starting to change because it also changes the genetic information it's almost like a mutation occurs in the body of a recipient uh, and that mutation confuses the emotional body which is starting to panic and emotionally person you know mentally everybody's saying that that's great you know you can leave you it's, it's the only way to survive physically 
and that's what the person mentally is trying to tell himself but emotionally he just doesn't feel at ease he starts feeling all this um feelings like a post-trauma feelings um, of Okay. Oksana, observe the astral body of the recipient that is the emotional one after the transplant. What condition can be created? Yeah, the um, post-traumatic stress disorder. It came up right away because, I mean, I, I'm looking at particular what came to me particular case i always see here on the lap the car crash right and the person that took liver from this person the car crash and inserted it into the recipient i see him on the right and whatever feelings this person on the left was feeling when he was about to crash and when the soul was still in the body that organ absorb that feeling it almost feels that way from the emotional body of that person and mental and yeah, it's like a fractal of the whole body that this person had including his energetic bodies and it's transplanted and merged with the energetic and physical body of this person as, as a um, recipient so the recipient would start feeling all this stress and all the thoughts and emotions that went through the body of the guy here on the left in the car crash. It always depends um, how the organ was received from whom, what person went through in his life, also the last minutes of his life. I feel it's very important because the recipient would always know inside what happened to that person, even if he is not told. He will start getting the flashbacks, dreams, just inner knowledge, you know. It would start having emotional ups and downs of that person that the organ belongs to. Yeah, it might create any psychological disorders, really. I mean, just like a soldier who comes from war and starts experiencing nightmares and thoughts and strange ideas you know and emotions are running wild i feel that the recipient would also have this problems it's especially like even moments from the life of this person, which are traumatic, he would start experiencing too. He might have visions of them. He might, he might have inner feelings or knowledge, and he would have like almost like a déjà vu thing inside. Wait, I, I don't think I lived that, but I feel I did. You know, like he would have some knowledge of some experiences that he never lived through physically but all of a sudden he has knowledge or experience from some particular events that he didn't participate in it's like two two or two software programs merged together and trying to create one but they're not compatible and that's what creating discomfort and the inner fight in between energetic bodies and also in between subconscious and conscious. And it's very stressful. Like I feel very anxious when I talk about this person or recipient because I feel his inner frustration is growing. He doesn't feel like he is the person he used to be before the implant. Okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. 
observe the dream phase of a recipient after an organ transplant. Yeah, those dreams. It starts getting nightmares. Especially in my case, I'm looking at the nightmares of the crash, the moments before the uh, soul exited the body. Mm, all this, all this, this it's, it's just like a um, chain of nightmares constantly. Maybe the same nightmare all over again every night. Or sometimes during the day, even flashes of it. And he would feel it even physically. You know, like anxiety, like uh, he's trying to get anxiety disorder type thing. Or he'll feel claustrophobic at times because this person was in the car before death. And or he couldn't get out of the car and things like that. It's just very traumatic. His sleep gets destructed uh, d disrupted big time. He almost like loses his sleep due to this information that is foreign in his body. It starts driving his body. Um, all of a sudden, it's not the soul of this body who drives the body. It's almost a program inserted in the body who is driving it also, and the soul loses partially control of it. I feel. Okay. Observe the dream phases and of a donor and a recipient in the event that the donor remains alive. Mm. Mm. There's like a, you know, there's, um, I see those two forks, like the resonance. Like if the piano plays in one room and the other instrument in the other, and I see these two people living, they can be totally different states even, but there's a connection created in between them and they synchronize, they synchronize in the sleep uh, mode. It's like the machine goes into sleep mode as a biological body machine and all of a sudden it catches the wave, the vibration of the other. And a lot of times they may have the same dreams. And if these people know each other, let's say, like family members, they might start, one start talking about the dream he had and, and the other one is shocked he had the same exact dream. Uh, the synchronization happens. It's almost like a telepathic connection also happens because the uh, two informational fields emerged together and now they create some sort of like an eight, you know, like they're always connected. Um, interconnection happens, yeah. Okay, do you want, you perceive anything else? Or? No, just synchronization. Okay. Synchronization. Okay. Observe the dream phases of a donor and recipient in the event. Oh, I think I just say this word, <laughs> sorry. What mm -hmm. happens energetically between donors and recipients every time an organ transplant is performed? If the donor is alive, um, now I see family members. That because, you know, there's like a notion of different situations, how the person would receive and transplant. Mm -hmm. Right now, I see like a brother uh, of uh, another brother. He's older, he's younger. And um, they interconnect more. There's a lot of compassion, but also there's a lot of low vibrational fields created around them because the donor feels so sorry for his brother. The brother feels thankful 
but also remorseful because he understands that the uh, his very dear brother is sacrificing in a way his organ and you never know how he's gonna live without it and how it's gonna affect his health i feel like they're both going down in terms of vibration but they also become more connected and almost like dependent emotional on each other because in fact their emotional bodies are almost merged together they, they, they become like <laughs> you know like in the astral i see them connected and walking together always mm -hmm. and if let's say one at the at the late age one dies another one would feel oh would feel all the emotions of his brother how he felt when he was about to die and it's basically one person goes through another person's mm, vibrational frequencies that we call emotions or feelings Mm, you become totally connected. I, I see like cords and cords of energies in between two people, the donor and recipient. And they're very strong connections. Because the um, each each tiny little cell of that organ has all the information of the whole body of the life of that person who is a donor. And so recipient receives all this information, the whole software, you know, disk of information, lots of files. <sighs> so they become connected that way. Okay. If the donor dies and passes through, what happens to his transplant organ from a subliminal point of view? Mm, he loses his body. The organ belongs to the body. I feel like it doesn't matter for the uh, essence or the soul. It's just soul gets disconnected and it goes. Mm. I just don't feel like anything. Well, what happens to the recipient, it's a different, you know, I just described that. He, he totally feels like the donor died. He knows exact moment. He, he feels the same feelings. If the donor was going through disease, uh, the recipient would feel all the feelings, emotions that the person was going being sick and so on but after the the soul die uh, soul leaves the body the, after the death of the body doesn't matter if the body was missing an organ or gave away one it because it totally disconnects from the physical it doesn't matter anymore so. Okay, so last question, mm -hmm. what, what other conditions can be created in the recipient? Split personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. In a self fighting, it would be milder, but it would be a person would, you know, a person can actually wake up just like starts asking questions, where the thoughts come from, start digging for information. It would stimulate, it can be like a catapult um, in progression for the person, for the recipient to start uh, researching this topic and non, not only this topic um, about what is this war inside myself? Does this, this sort of questions 
and then they would lead him to the idea that the uh, subconscious and conscious and they're split and then the body has programs too and what if I received foreign programs with my organ implant transplant and um, what kind of information they care, uh, carry and then he would probably try to request the information of the person who donated this organ and they would all, all fit together and the person would understand would start waking up you know that that would stimulate it too and then once again I see those but it's like they're far away there's lots of lots of alien groups who are watching this type of experiences experiments of theirs they're very interested in actually what happens to mental emotional bodies and all these questions you previously asked these are also their questions and go into their database that they uh, do these experiments on humans that's um, what I feel it's just it's just a big range of different conditions from bipolar disorder down to uh, searching for answers and uh, you know augmenting your mm, consciousness level it can stimulate the person to search for answers too it could go both ways it's either all of a sudden you go crazy and develop all kinds of conditions or you become more of in control of yourself in your understanding of the world and your per um, perception is starting to change oh, yeah it's it's like plus and minus two opposites you know what can happen and in the middle too so person can just find uh, peace with himself by understanding something happened after this event but the person can convince himself or herself to leave for for his children or relatives or just to be alive for that but they would never feel the same i don't feel a person would ever feel the same after they transplant there's always this not only immunological reaction going on but also mental and emotional to rejection so. that's all i guess Okay, uh, thank you, Oksana. It was amazing, like always. And now we can start our exploration questions. Okay, uh, in the in the first questions, um, you mentioned about like uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, alien factory, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. where they created all these uh, basically uh, body organs to especially when they use the DNA in etheric um, but they didn't use obviously with uh, with the with the humans mm. do you think do you think is any body recycle I mean the same souls they come back in the same um, basically body that can be used again I mean the same soul to even if they change family or part of the world the same uh, mm. DNA yeah. yeah so it's, it's like the, the farm yeah when they reproduce they totally can do that and they do that a lot I feel like there's also one soul can be put in cloned like you can be living right now and let's see my example my body can be cloned by some alien group for the experiment purposes mm -hmm. and can be like four more 
Oksanas, but named differently. Yeah. Running in the same timeline, and I might not even know them. They might even have the same name, and second name even. And, you know, if you Google search, you, you might find the same exact yeah. person. Uh, yes, they, they do that too. They clone the bodies. They That's what it is for. And they also know that the, each organ, it's almost like, like I compared it to Milky Way or Galaxy. In Galaxy, each star and each planet has its uh, all... Um, it's like an energy spot, energy mechanism that actually needed for the existence of this galaxy because the galaxy is like a body of a human and each star is like an organ of a body of that galaxy or the organ of our galaxy, which we call body. And this, um, um, each organ is like an energy machine that is powering the body. So the body can run and it also processes energies, pushes them in the right direction. You know, they flow through it and they the alien groups know that. So if you take one star out, you disbalance the system. It's not in the equality. It's not functioning. The mechanism is broken in a way. So you can either suck this and uh, suck this vital energy out and use it for powering your spaceships or you know whatever equipment you have on the spaceships you can even power a, a planet it's possible oksana if that these uh, aliens that they always experimented they we know that they love humans they're creating a frankenstein i mean mm -hmm. every time the the same soul reborns in a maybe in different parts of the world, they change organ and they try to create uh, a body with different organs every time he reborns. Do you think it's possible? I see some labor laboratory underground in Alaska. I see some clones on the left. It's like a long corridor. And right here I see like little square tables on the wheels. And, and there's like um mm, glass boxes and I see hearts like a row of hearts inside each box and there's tubes going into each box container it's made out of glass and the heart inside the tubes go through the glass into the heart and there's like um you know like iPad that it's more like a glass thing without the rims connected and I feel the information goes inside the heart they can pre-program the heart for reactions for you know like we say sometimes he has a kind heart they they can reprogram the heart so the person becomes evil whoever has this heart would block the energies of the soul and would make the person act not from the heart but from the brain which would activate and amplify his reptilian mm, mechanism of reaction he'll be more aggressive he won't feel compassion and i feel like they're doing this a lot they okay they, they program organs and then sort them into bodies um, there is a connection uh, about this, uh, you know, you, says in a, you saw this in Alaska, yeah? Mm -hmm. What about the, um, the cartel in Mexico? You know, many people disappear there for the traffic organs. Yes. There are even children. They horrible stories like children that they born to basically with the same uh, blood or organs, you know? that can be uh, basically good in the future for some others. Very, very terrible stories. Do you think the aliens, if they, are, they have a connection, they have an agreement? Yeah, this? they're different. When you said Mexico, I, I, I got like a split and I see two locations. I see Mexico as a country mm -hmm. and I see New Mexico as a state. 
-hmm. New Mexico is a state. I see like the hills and the mountains in inside the hollow and there's like tons of it's almost like on guards with the army people and reptilians dressed in army suits and their spaceships mm -hmm. and underneath there's like um there's some of them have staircases and other bases have elevators look like capsules and i see a lot of uh like rooms they are some of them have metallic walls others are made out of rocks i see kids i see little children like they're just naked they're just weird they're naked and i see adults they're separated there are women and men and they put them together you know like breeders put like a female and yeah. male let's say bunny to get them produce reproduce yeah. they do the same as humans they put a male and female and the female gets pregnant and then they take the baby and they put this and this is like for oh this is not only for organs though that's for experimentation and also they load them up in those spaceships that I see in the mountains and spaceship goes through the huge portals mm -hmm. and they are in New Mexico and they drive them, fly them to Orion and they fly them to Sirius A bases mm -hmm. to Mars and Moon and they use them as slave force uh everywhere hmm. okay it's quite disturbing uh do you think that um you know the the people of the power the presidents uh, they are aware about what's going on they do you think they know about what's happened they they know more than what they ignore mm. or they yeah, they sign the contracts. Mm -hmm. They basically exchange humans and they put this specific number of humans that they allow to be abducted every year for the technologies that the alien races give them. Okay, this is the aliens, yes? Uh, this is uh, entities. Are aliens that they, they basically sign an agreement with the humans? Yeah, you know what? And those humans who sign agreements, they're not really humans. There's little left. It's just literally controlled by, most of them are controlled by reptilians, but they're also some other alien groups. I see like Nordic looking tall whites. I see those mm, like Nazi people in black suits. Mm, I see mantidi like mantis people yeah you know so basically they are <laughs> those humans are like uh, biological suits for the alien group aliens who control the earth they split the earth into groups into camps of control they literally walk with the energy into human because this human is genetic there's certain bloodlines they can walk in this is like genetically modified for him to feed in like like we put on this suit and we see if it feeds us the same thing but it's a genetic connection that they have to show up in the physical and to sign a contract but in fact it's like aliens signed the contracts with aliens because one alien group owns this country another alien group owns or controls this country and they do in exchange they create it's like a big theater thing it really is and we look at this theater and we think uh, there are uh, there are good people there are bad people there's this country and that and in fact it's all the same they all have the same agenda to use us and they're kind of like laughing at us that, that we fight with each other but because that's the only way for them to get the energy they need out of us for us to fight 
In fact, we're all in the same position. There's no difference in between us. We're like slaves to the whole huge pyramid of a system. Mm. Okay, very interesting. Um, uh, to come back in the, the organs that we basically are transplanted to the recipient, um, you mentioned that sometime uh, these uh, basically um, organs, they can change the personality uh, of the person, like bad dreams, um, mm. um, you know, even anxiety, sign of anxiety and other problems. Um, do you think even the blood transfusion can be, can have the same basically contamination, if you want to call, with our etheric mind and our subliminal mind, or it changed our DNA somehow? Oh yeah, it's, I feel like the blood transfusion is done to certain people through some alien uh, experiments also because some people have very strong DNA they carry the characteristics of an alien DNA that might even dominate. Mm -hmm. And those people, they try to work, those alien groups try to work with the entities, or a lot of times the, uh, they're controlled by this very alien groups, these people, and they put in situations according to their life contracts to go through blood transfusion. Well, they're trying to push them into a situation when they would need a blood transfusion so they can merge the information, they can change the informational field of their body system. And you can transmutate DNA and you can make these people weaker because when they are so when you change their DNA and change the characteristics or shut them down, mm -hmm. this person is not a threat to the system anymore because this kind of people can change a lot. One person can disbalance their matrix system, their control system, and they're very dangerous for those who are in control. Therefore, they're trying to, they would try to create diseases in their lives or by using the implants they have on the bodies or if the person if let's say he had a session right got rid of all the entities and implants they would try to put this um, person into situations where they would try to enter the energy field of this person or reconnect again because these people are dangerous they just um they destroy us of the control systems. And therefore, each, almost each and every one who went through a blood transfusion, he carried an alien DNA that was dangerous for the control system we live in. And they wanted to mm, shut it down for this lifetime so the person would not be dangerous and would not be able to use its characteristics, its abilities in this lifetime to change something um, in this control system and, and this, you know, and this crazy theater run by psychopaths who are controlled by alien groups. Um, that's what it does. Okay, um, I can uh, ask you just two questions because I can see that you're getting tired. Um, is there a part of one organ which, so we can transplant, you know, uh, a variety of organs in our body? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think the brain <laughs> at the moment is possible. Which is the, the most, the most powerful organ in our body? in terms of uh, uh, 
you know, energetic power. You know, it's interesting when you said the brain is not possible. I see the labs where they transplant little parts of the brain. The strange thing is, I feel like they would tell a person that they would transplant, but in fact, they're not doing it. It just um, plasticides. It's almost like an implant that they put into the brain. But it's also part of the um, experimentation. Mm -hmm. They can and they can't, you know, they they almost like would lie to a person that they would transplant part of the brain, but they would just, it's like an AI created uh, implant that resembles brain, but there's nothing it does. It just dictates the programs to the brain and the program starts start running through the neural connections, making person think what he would normally not think and would make him do things he would normally not do type thing. But the, the, the one that they can control the most is that heart organ. It's the most powerful because they see it in a lot of underground bases that they do this. And also in space, in different uh, alien groups, they can reprogram any organ, but heart is the like um like a strong connection to your soul, like a portal mm -hmm. to the soul, and they're very interested in that portal. Mm -hmm. And the beat is the is the connection you think with our soul. Yes, the the heart also create a certain magnetic field around your body that is it's it, it's like a reflection in a way of your soul energy. Mm -hmm. So if the person is very kind and compassionate, and it just like it means that he's this person has a strong connection with the soul. Mm -hmm. And the heart is not shut down. And um, as the, as the opposite is, if a person doesn't have any emotions and you know exhibits psychopathic kind of characteristics, mm -hmm. he'll kill anybody without remorse. It means his heart is either an artificial implant or it just completely shut down, or yeah. it's not a person. So it's not a robot. The so definitely going to change the way we love, the way we perceive emotions right, uh, right. when we think about our heart. Do you think uh, every organ in our body have a different individuality or personality? I always, this is what always I, I ask myself. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like we have a team in our body, and mm -hmm. I'm always wondering if the stomach has its own. Uh, uh, like feelings, or is heart, is the liver, our lungs, you know, yeah. that works, they are assembled together, but they perceive the emotions differently from another organ because they want, the liver has to, you know, to do a, yeah. a special job. When you said that, I saw a triangle, it's like, the triangle goes like this. It's across the chest and it goes into the stomach. It creates some sort of triangle, which is sh when it's shining, it's more like a novel, but that's what I saw. And I feel like our real brain, but emotional and like, let's call it a soul brain, is located in the heart and in the stomach. The third brain, like we call it, it just belongs to the physical body. It's like a piece of physical, you know, mm -hmm. but this brain is not connected to the soul. What's really connected to the soul and soul acts through feelings and emotions and heart and stomach are the ones that the soul operates through and uses as instruments for you to feel people 
for you to tell you something. Just I, I feel like in situations you have to, to disregard what his brain is saying, but go by your heart feeling, which can be like you can even hurt or pulsate or be at ease depending on situation and the stomach always always it's like the biggest sensitivity organ that i see that gives you the right um answer to a question regarding any person or any situation you know like they call gut feeling yeah even when they metabolize any information um, and they digest so uh, if it's stuck in your stomach, then uh, it becomes a pain. Well, it's like, I, I, I yeah, don't know it's, why they call it gut feeling. I would call it stomach feeling because stomach, I feel like a big portal shining light through and it's like my soul shining through it. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Oksana. I think we are uh, a bit late <laughs> um, because uh, you worked very hard today and uh, as always, you, you was ex exceptional. I will take you back and I will go into count from uh, five to one. And uh, when I uh, go into count to five to one, you will go into feel super energetic, refreshed and ready for a beautiful day. So. Mm -hmm. Five, you start your body to wake up and to relax. And four, you can start to stretch your arms and your legs. Three, a beautiful energy, a sensation of recharge everywhere in your body. And two, you are about to open your eyes. And one, open your eyes and welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. It was really Thanks. interesting. It was a beautiful, beautiful um, trip <laughs> in our uh, basically in our body and the way they are. Uh, not only we we treat our body, but the other people, right. the other entities use yeah. our body parts. Yeah, wow. that's interesting. I was thinking when you were counting me out, that's why I was kind of smiling because I am wearing this was the heart. I don't know if you see wow. it here. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And I just pick, I don't know why I picked it. It's almost like, you know. <laughs> yeah, you was really connected. Yeah. OK, darling, uh, thank you so much. And uh, yes, um, we'll see you for the next uh, protocol investigation and uh, bye bye to everybody. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Buenos días. Dzień dobry. Bienvenidos a este primer video de disclosure en español y polaco. Bardzo was serdecznie witamy w, na tym nowym wideo, które będzie w języku hiszpańskim i polskim na kanale Disclosures. Vamos a producir mucho más vídeos en futuro como estos vídeos informativos. W przyszłości stworzymy dużo więcej takich wideo, które będą Was informowa informowały o różnych rzeczach. Porque estamos notando que cuanto más se va divulgando este trabajo, estas hipnosis por internet, también cuanto más mala información se está difundiendo. A to dlatego, że zauważyliśmy, że im więcej wstawiamy sesji z naszymi hipnozami, tym więcej jakby informacji sprzecznych zaczyna się rozprzestrzeniać. I entonces hoy vamos a hablar de las sesiones investigativas. Więc dzisiaj będziemy mówić o sesjach badawczych. Porque estoy viendo que hay personas que a lo mejor se dedican a una sesión con una persona, se van a algún lugar preguntan algo y lo poco de información que pueden extraer de una sesión se lo, se lo creen como si fuera oro, completamente puro oro. 
bo zauważyłem, że są takie sesje i takie osoby, które robią jedną sesję z jedną osobą na dany temat i kiedy wychodzi tam jakaś informacja, to jest ona odbierana, jakby to, była rzeczywiście, jakby to było rzeczywiście coś niesamowicie wiarygodnego, jakby to było czyste złoto. Yo os digo que la sesión así dicha investigativa no existe. Ja chciałbym wam powiedzieć, że sesja badawcza tak naprawdę nie istnieje. Entonces podríais como preguntar, entonces cuando haces una sesión a un cliente y preguntas cosas, ¿por qué preguntas? Więc mógłbyś, sobie, mógłbyś mi zadać pytanie, więc skoro robisz jakąś sesję z jakąś osobą i zadajesz jej pytania, to właściwie po co je w ogóle zadajesz? Sí, sabemos que la información en hipnosis está muy, pero de verdad muy contaminada. My bardzo dobrze wiemy, że informacja, która wychodzi podczas hipnozy jest niezwykle, ale to niezwykle zanieczyszczona. Y esa información, así como sale de la hipnosis, no podemos tomarla como conocimiento, como investigación. Więc taka, taka, takiej informacji, która wychodzi podczas sesji hipnozy, nie bierzemy nigdy jako takiej informacji, która jest rzeczywiście zgodna, z, bardzo prawdziwa, zgodna z prawdą i oczywista. En el caso de sesiones a clientes, la información que sacamos no sirve por otro objetivo. El objetivo es llegar a la causa de su problema y trabajar. Te informacje, które uzyskujemy podczas sesji dla klientów, służą nam zupełnie do czegoś innego. Celem jest to, żeby znaleźć przyczynę i pracować nad nią. Pero qué significa que la información está contaminada? Cuánto está contaminada y por qué? Ale co to właściwie oznacza e, informacja zanieczyszczona? Kiedy jest zanieczyszczona i dlaczego jest zanieczyszczona? Hay que saber que cuando nosotros pedimos una información y no llega, nos llega a través de una persona en hipnosis, esta información sale de una fuente, para así decirlo, y atraviesa muchas dimensiones, muchas densidades. Cuando prosimos a una información podczas sesji, to esta información powiedzmy to w ten sposób, pochodzi z jakiegoś źródła, ale w międzyczasie przechodzi przez wiele gęstości i wiele wymiarów. I también pasa por conciencias, por inteligencias. Esa información viene atrapada en el éter por varios seres. Ale ta informacja przechodzi przez, prze, też przez wiele umysłów, wiele świadomości. Jest po, istnieje w eterze i może być prze, przechwycona również przez wiele bytów. Estos seres, estas inteligencias, pueden voluntariamente o involuntariamente distorsionarla. Y te byty, te istoty lub świadomości, mogą ją zniekształcić świadomie lub nieświadomie. Y además, la persona que está en hipnosis tiene sus creencias, su mentalidad, su perspectiva, su, sus opiniones. Esta estructura mental Contamina también esta información. A co więcej, osoba, która jest w stanie hipnozy, ma swoje własne przekonania, swoje własne wartości i wierzenia, swoją własną mentalność i przez tą właśnie strukturę całą mentalną również może dojść do jeszcze kolejnego zanieczyszczenia. I además, si nosotros queremos investigar, por ejemplo, una persona o un ser que no tiene ninguna conexión con el ambiente hipnótico donde estamos trabajando, Esta persona puede no autorizar la salida de informaciones de, de sí mismo. A co więcej, jeśli połączymy się z jakąś istotą, która absolutnie nie należy do tego środowiska hipnotycznego, w którym pracujemy, taka istota może nie zgodzić się na przekazanie informacji. Si hay interacción, si hay interferencias entre un ser y otro, eh, es posible que circule información por las conexiones, por los pactos. Jeśli jest jakaś inter, interferencja między dwoma istotami, to wtedy dzięki tym paktom, albo przez te pakty, przez to połączenie, które istnieje, rzeczywiście wychodzą informacje. Pero si en, en aquella sesión en concreto, ese ser o esa persona se va a cuestionar y no hay ninguna conexión, es muy improbable que llegue una información autorizada. 
Ale jeśli zdarza się tak, że łączymy się z istotą, która nie ma z tym nic wspólnego, to jest bardzo mało prawdopodobne, że dostaniemy jakąś informację. Entonces, imaginemos que queremos investigar sobre un personaje famoso de la historia. No, na przykład wyobraźmy sobie, że chcielibyśmy otrzymać informację o jakiejś osobie niezwykle znanej, historycznej. Si no tenemos de alguna manera alguna conexión con los elementos del ambiente hipnótico y esta persona, aunque no esté conectada, no autoriza esta, esta información, pues no llega. Więc jeśli wyobrazimy sobie, że ta e, osoba nie jest w żaden sposób połączona z tym środowiskiem hipnotycznym, w którym pracujemy, może się tak zdarzyć, że absolutnie nie zezwoli na żadne przekazywanie e, informacji na swój temat. I kiedy pasa esto, hay siempre, o casi siempre, alguna entidad que se aprovecha de la situación. I kiedy to się dzieje, zazwyczaj pojawia się jakiś byt, e, który wykorzystuje tę sytuację. Se puede presentar con la mm, supuesta identidad de la persona o del ser que estamos buscando, o puede, de todas formas, modificar o inventar una información por su cuenta, por su personal ventaja. Może zrobić dwie rzeczy, albo przyjąć, zidentyfikować się z osobą, o której chcemy zrobić tę sesję, przyjąć jej tożsamość, albo z, zmienić informacje, które powinny, które chcielibyśmy otrzymać, tak aby to działało na jej korzyść. Nosotros en sesión a clientes podemos trabajar porque el cliente nos autoriza a trabajar en él eh, en su sesión. Podczas sesji dla klientów możemy pracować nad, nad takimi informacjami, bo wtedy bo otrzymujemy zgodę na informacje właśnie dzięki temu klientowi. I podemos trabajar con sus seres queridos, por ejemplo, o con los seres que interfieren con ella, propio porque hay estas conexiones. I możemy pracować na przykład z istotami, które kocha ta dana osoba lub z bytami, które w nią ingerują właśnie przez to, przez to połączenie, które tam istnieje. Entonces, hay una gran diferencia entre la sesión a un cliente para solucionar sus problemas y hacer sesiones para investigar. Dlatego istnieje tak, tak, taka duża różnica między sesjami, które robimy dla klientów, aby rozwiązać ich problemy, i między sesjami takimi poszukiwawczymi. Por eso, por eso digo que no existe una sesión investigativa. I dlatego właśnie Wam mówię, że nie istnieje coś takiego jak sesja badawcza. Lo que existe es un protocolo de sesiones de investigación. To, co istnieje, to pewien protokół sesji badawczych. Hay que seguir un protocolo y hay que seguir ejecutar una serie de sesiones y con personas diferentes. Więc trzeba zawsze śledzić ten sam protokół, a jednocześnie wykonać wiele sesji z różnymi osobami. El protocolo tiene que ser único, unívoco, porque hay que preguntar en un tema las mismas preguntas para ir en la misma dirección. Ten protocol powinien być zawsze taki sam, ponieważ należy zadawać takie same pytania, tak aby iść zawsze w tym samym kierunku. Cuanto más está restringido este espacio de investigación, cuanto más podemos tener eh, más probabilidad de tener buena información. Im bardziej zawężamy obszar naszych poszukiwań, tym bardziej prawdopodobne będzie, że otrzymamy dobre informacje. Sí, podemos también eh, aumentar este espacio, pero tenemos que aumentar proporcionalmente el número de sesiones por hacer. Możemy oczywiście rozszerzyć ten obszar, ale wtedy będziemy zmuszeni również rozszerzyć ilość tych sesji. Luego, cuando tenemos una grande serie de sesiones pero estamos hablando de centenas o de hasta de millares de sesiones. Y wtedy mówimy o olbrzymiej liczbie sesji, od setki po, po tysiące. Tenemos que recoger toda aquella información que es común a todas o a casi todas estas sesiones hechas. I wtedy musimy pozbierać te informacje, które są wspólne dla wszystkich bądź prawie wszystkich tych sesji. Esta información común 
os vais a ver que es un porcentaje muy pequeño con respecto a la totalidad de la información. Y zobaczycie, że ta informacja wspólna będzie naprawdę niewielkim odsetkiem tych informacji, które się tam pojawią. Są pepitas de oro. To są takie malutkie ziarenka. Es como si nosotros vamos a un río, vamos a coger este filtro, vamos a coger muchísima arena para recoger solo muy pocas pepitillas de oro. I można to przyrównać do poszukiwania złota, kiedy filtruje się dno rzeki, zbiera się mnóstwo piasku, a na koniec pojawiają się maleńkie ziarenka złota. Es así que es información de oro. I to jest właśnie ta informacja złota. Si hoy podemos decir que hay seres que interfieren bastante con el ser humano y que tienen formas de animales reptiles o de animales a forma de insectos, etc., es porque todo esto sale desde que se empezaron las sesiones de hipnosis y hay muchísimas, millares y millares con esta información común. I jeśli dzisiaj możemy powiedzieć, że są ingerencje, które przybierają formy albo reptilii, albo jakichś insektów, to dlatego, że takie informacje wychodzą od początku naszych sesji hipnotycznych i są wspólne i jest ich tysiące. Pero si yo digo que la ciudad de Nueva York en el 1452, en exacto en aquel punto, había eh, una casa que vivía un viejo, un viejo que se llamaba Tom, pues solo en aquella sesión ha salido y cuanto más contaminada puede ser, no lo va a saber nadie. Ale jeśli chciałbym powiedzieć, um, przekazać taką informację, że w Nowym Jorku w 1452 roku stał taki a taki dom, w którym mieszkał taki a taki starszy pan o imieniu Tom, to nie mam pojęcia, jak bardzo zanieczyszczona będzie ta informacja. Así entonces se hace investigación. Es un trabajo muy largo, muy duro y tiene que ser hecho um, con un protocolo riguroso i severo. A więc właśnie w taki sposób należy robić sesję badawcze. Jest to proces bardzo długi, ciężki i który wymaga bardzo restrykcyjnego protokołu. I to jest po prostu, że nosotros ya vamos a empezar a hacer ciclos de investigación. I właśnie dlatego zaczniemy teraz robić takie cykle badawcze. La estructura del team, que cada vez va creciendo eh, siempre más, y el número de clientes que cada día mmm, no, contactan con nosotros nos permiten organizar estos ciclos de investigación. Y ponieważ estructura naszego zespołu cały czas się powiększa, a także liczba klientów, którzy, którzy kontaktują się z nami każdego dnia, te dwa te czynniki pozwalają nam na to, żebyśmy zrobili taki cykl badawczy. Creo que ya he dicho todo o casi todo. Eh, cualquier pregunta podéis escribirla en los comentarios del vídeo o donde sea publicado el vídeo. Myślę, że powiedziałem wszystko, bądź prawie wszystko, a jeśli macie jakieś pytania, to proszę eh, zadajcie je pod tym wideo. Gracias por vuestra atención. Dziękujemy za waszą uwagę. Y gracias a ti, Milena. Gracias a ti, Carlos. Dziękujemy. Ciao. Ciao.